Welcome to Geography Talk's last minute revision series. Today we're going to be looking at the tectonic cycle in the run-up to your exams. So the tectonic cycle involves the different layers of the earth. They include the inner core, the outer core, the mantle and the crust. As you can see on our screens here, while they're divided into four larger layers, within those layers there's very much different areas. So the two main ones that you're going to look at will be one, the lithosphere, and two, the asthenosphere. These are two that they will look for most often in the exams. You'll be asked to label them on diagrams, and you're also going to be looking at them in terms of keywords in essays. Um, what's a very common question is you get a chunk of the earth, like here, or you get this kind of a diagram, a little bit bigger, that'll look a little bit more like the earth, and they'll be showing you the different layers, and they will ask you to label them, and you're going to be looking for crust, mantle, outer core, inner core, and then sometimes they will ask for lithosphere and asthenosphere as well. But really, it's important to understand the order of the different layers, because that helps us to understand how plate tectonics work. And in particular, if we come in here to the core, a very common question is, what are the two materials? And they are nickel and iron. So common questions, you often get them. Nickel and iron, they're the two materials in the inner and outer cores. Moving on then, the next thing we're going to look at is Pangaea. Now Pangaea was what we call a supercontinent. So when all the continents were once joined together and they formed a single continent. And Alfred Wenger then, back in 1912, he was the one to discover this theory of continental drift. And he was the one that just figured out, well, at one stage, we had one landmass called Pangaea. And then about 200 million years ago, those continents split apart and we eventually got Laurasia and Gondwana land. What's maybe more important than that, though, is what was it that caused that continent to split apart? And indeed, what is it that's causing our continents today to split apart? And that brings us on to convection currents. Now convection currents are the driving force behind uh, the movement of plate. I think you'll all be familiar with the different diagrams. They work in the mantle underneath the crust and as they move they drag the plates with them. In particular what you can see is the magma that is here nearest the core gets heated. And as it heats, or as it gets heated, it begins to rise up just here. But as it rises, it cools because it's moving away from its heat source and can't maintain a constant heat. And then as it cools, it's going to move to the side. And then eventually, it'll sink back down towards the core. It gets reheated here and here, and it moves back up again rises as it heats and that's what gives us this circular motion it's similar if you're boiling a kettle it's a similar sort of motion you're going to get there similar to air in the atmosphere hot air is going to rise just like this hot magma is going to rise and when it rises moves to the side it pulls the plates with it so the direction the, the convection current goes generally is the direction that the plate is going to move as well now that we know how, how uh, convection currents work, we know that Pangaea existed, we can start looking at continental drift in a bit more detail. So as you said, Alfred Wenger in 1912, he came up with a theory and he theorized that there was this landmass called Pangaea. And then about 200 million years ago, as we said, they split into these two, Laurasia and Gondwana land. And this is all happening because of those convection currents. And over those millions and millions of years, they slowly moved away from each other and they formed the continents as we know today. And as we go into the future, the modern day continents, they're going to move as well. And in a couple of million years time, we're going to have a completely different look to the continents on the Earth. Now, the question then is, how did Alfred Wenger actually figure this out? Well, what he did is he realised that if you look at the world map, land masses look as though they could fit together like a jigsaw, particularly Africa, which is here, and South America, which is here. Ireland, the UK, also look like they fit together, and India looks like it can fit in here in Africa. 
in addition to that then, he realised that certain countries had identical folding patterns, so fold mountains, meaning that during the same folding orogeny, they were created, so there must have been a single landmass for this to happen. One of the examples is here in South Africa and South America, where we can see, I'll make that a little bit more pronounced. Yeah, I'll go try better again. in South Africa and South America, that there was mountain ranges of the same age and pattern. And so he theorized that, well, this must have been the same mountain range then. He then identified the same plant and animal fossils in countries that were far apart from each other. Again, we're looking here in Africa and South America. And you can see here a coastline that matched. And in addition to that, there's evidence of uh, sea fossils along that coastline that match up to so the same creatures. Again, theorizing and backing up his theory that they must have been in the same location at one time. Um, th the reason for that is because they would have needed the same climate to survive. And so the land masses must have been connected because they had to have been in the same place for these animals to have survived. Um, I mean, there was a theory years ago that people built bridges and this is how these animals... I mean, it's nonsense, you know. There's no way that these animals could have travelled the distance that was required across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, in addition to that, then, we can see here glacial deposits between the two, once again, giving us very good evidence of them being the same landmass. We also have granite rock of the same age in a similar pattern along here, and all of these things added together gives us that theory of plate tectonics and I suppose brings it from being more than a theory and actually gives us that evidence that people, you know, the sceptical people really wanted. As we move on then from that and we look to the more modern day picture, here's um, just a nice quick little graphic of all the different plates. Ireland, obviously, is here on the Eurasian plate a good one to remember because they like asking that question. Another one that they look for then are common plate boundaries. So one of the most common one here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, if I can draw it properly. And that is where the North American and the Eurasian plates are separated, so they're pulling apart and it's creating that new land under the sea and in particular creates a volcanic island of Iceland. Another very common one here is the San Andreas Fault Line. That's where the North American plates and the Pacific plates are sliding past each other and it's creating that area for earthquakes. If we go over here to where the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate are um, converging, we can see the Himalayas are formed there. And they then do tend to be the most common plate boundaries to look at. Some of the common plates that they like asking, they like asking about the Nazca plate. You'll often get a picture and they'll be like, well, what's this plate? It's the Nazca plate. I think the other ones are straightforward enough. Eurasian, North American, South American, African, Pacific, Australian, Indian. The Nazca plate then is the next, or I suppose the other major plate that exists. And it's a good question. So it's good to know these things. And that kind of ties us in then to the different types of plate boundaries. So you've got a divergent plate boundary, a transformed plate boundary, and a convergent plate boundary. Each of them work in different ways, and each of them will present or create their own unique features. The first one we're going to look at is a divergent plate boundary, or as I think a lot of people would call it a constructive plate boundary. And it's called that because it creates things. So as the plates move apart, new rock is formed. Um, generally, when it's oceanic and oceanic, it's going to form here at the bottom of the ocean. You get what's called a mid-ocean ridge, like the mid-Atlantic ridge. Uh, you find that where the American and the Eurasian plates are separating. Or sometimes where you have a continental, 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 or an oceanic, you get volcanoes because they come up above the water and then they're active. Whereas volcanoes under the water just tend to create um, more volcanoes without that much of an impact. Sometimes the ash cloud will explode into the sky. That does look quite good. Um, but in terms of 
threat to volcanic or threat from volcanic activity it's quite minimal under the sea a transformed plate boundary then you might also call it a passive plate boundary uh, these were two plates that are sliding past each other earthquakes are very common along here you can get shallow or deep focus quakes depending on whereabouts the focus is how close the surface is how strong the slip from the plates was how strong the friction was and as i said the san andreas fault in california is probably the most common trans or the most well known transform plate boundary you're going to find and the third one then a convergent plate boundary or as is more known a destructive plate boundary um, because it destroys things um, so what is happening here is the two plates are colliding together the heavier plate is subducted so down here you're going to have your subduction zone get subducted into the mantle where it will then melt and generally then what happens is that that melted plate is super hot and it bursts up through the plate above it and forms your volcano uh, along that line you can also get a, an ocean trench the light plate obviously then is pushed upwards and it creates on this side fold mountains so a lot going on a convergent plate boundary if you get an, an essay question that's asking you about plate boundaries this is the one you can probably talk most about because so many different things are happening at it and just to sum up then because I suppose the idea of this is that it's a quick wrap-up video just to kind of bring things home for you here's some sample questions that I found so they all tend to relate to the, the theory of plate tectonics and even if the question isn't specifically asking for it if it's on plate tectonics you've got to bring it in there somewhere so one question is to explain the theory of plate tectonics that's very straightforward you can go through and you can talk about Alfred Wenger um, you can talk about Arthur Holmes who was the man that actually discovered convection currents um, Morris Ewing was the man that discovered a, a series of volcanoes in the Atlantic Ocean called the Mid-Atlantic uh, Mid Ridge that helped us to explain plate boundaries Harry Hess he was the one that uh, I suppose came to the conclusion of sea floor splitting or sea floor spreading um, and you just need to link all of that in together and then you bring in your different plate boundaries and you, your different continents and you look at the different proofs again assessing the proof of continental drift you're doing the exact same thing here you're looking at well what are the proofs of plate tectonics what you know how do we know this has happened and we go back to what we said about the rocks about the glaciers about the um the fossils about the shapes bring everything in together uh, c examine the distribution and impacts of constructive plate boundaries so constructive is where they're separating what you're looking at here are volcanoes um mid-ocean ridges volcanic islands that's what you're talking about don't confine yourself to just saying you know constructive plate boundaries they pull apart and then that's it because you can't think of anything else talk about what happens there give examples always give examples of everything and d then is to examine similarities in the global distribution of earthquakes and fold mountains so what it on the surface what it looks here to be is as well what talk to me about destructive plate boundaries right what is happening at destructive plate boundaries well we know earthquakes happen we know cold mountains happen so now you want to talk about whereabouts in the world they happen this is where you're talking about your pacific ring of fire this is where you bring in the different examples you have you've probably studied an earthquake you've probably looked at different fold mountains bring them in here talk about how they form talk about where they form and talk about convection currents driving that um because that is really what it's looking for here so look at that was a really quick summary video just to kind of some that you can listen to or watch the night for your exam when you're trying to revise the topic i hope it's been helpful if it has drop a like on the video subscribe as well for more of this content and we'll see you next time